So in the previous video we saw how to plot the root locus of a particular control system. If you guys haven't watched that video yet, I'll leave the link in the description below. Please do watch it first before watching this video. So in this video, we will be discussing another problem in which we can plot the root locus of a particular control system. My name is Rishi Ranju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So let us plot the root locus of a particular control system where the constant K varies from 0 to infinite. So here the open loop transfer function is given as g of s into h of s is equal to k into s plus 2 into s plus 3 divided by s plus 1 into s minus 1. So here when we get the open loop transfer function the first thing that we have to do is to observe and find the zeros and poles of this particular open loop transfer function. So here the zeros are given as the first zero is said 1 is equal to when s is equal to minus 2. So so here z1 is equal to minus 2 and z2 is equal to when s is equal to minus 3. So therefore there are two zeros here and now the first pole is when p1 is equal to and s is equal to minus 1 and the pole second pole p2 is when s is equal to plus 1. So now let us plot these over here. So here the first pole is given as p1 is equal to minus 1 over here. This is the first pole p1 and now the second pole p2 is when s is equal to plus 1. So this is over here say p2. And now here the first 0 z1 is when z1 is equal to minus 2. So here this is the first 0 say z1 and now the second 0 z2 is equal to minus 3. So the second 0 here is z2 when z2 is equal to minus 3. So here let us denote the zeros as circles and the poles as just crosses. So here we have plotted the zeros and poles over here. So the first step is to identify the number of loci. So the number of loci is the maximum of the number of poles and the number of zeros. So here the number of poles is 2 and the number of zeros is 2. So therefore this is equal to 2. So now in step number 2 we have to now find the number of asymptotes which is given as the number of poles minus the number of zeros. So here there are 2 poles and 2 zeros. So therefore this becomes 2 minus 2 which is equal to 0 so therefore here there are no asymptotes present here. So because there are no asymptotes present here we don't have to find the angle of asymptotes because when there are no asymptotes why find the angle of asymptotes because at the end of the day there are no asymptotes present at all. So now we have found the number of loci and the number of asymptotes. Next we have to find the breakaway point. So let us now find the breakaway point. So in order to find the breakaway point first you have to formulate the characteristic equation of this particular control system. So the characteristic equation is given as 1 plus g of s into h of s is equal to 0. But here this g of s into h of s is given here as k into s plus 2 into s plus 3 divided by s plus 1 into s minus 1. So therefore this would now become 1 plus k into s plus 2 into s plus 3 divided by s plus 1 into s minus 1 is equal to 0. So now let us expand this. So here we have s plus 1 into s minus 1. So here this would become a plus b into a minus b which is a squared minus b squared that is s squared minus 1. So taking this onto the numerator over here we would now get s squared minus 1 plus here we have k multiplied by we have s plus a into s plus b which is s squared plus 3 plus 2 into s that is 5s plus 3 into 2 which is 6 is equal to 0. So from this we get the value of k as k is equal to minus s squared minus 1 divided by s squared plus 5s plus 6. Let us take this as equation number 1. So now in order to find the breakaway point what we have to do is that we have to take dk by ds and we have to equate it to 0. So let us take dk by ds. So this has a fraction. So here when we take the derivative of a fraction what we do is that the denominator into derivative of the numerator minus 
numerator into derivative of the denominator, the whole divided by denominator squared. That is the differentiation rule in the case of a fraction. So let us take that. First we have the denominator s square plus 5s plus 6 into the derivative of the numerator. Here it is 2s minus now the numerator which is s squared minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of the denominator which is 2s plus 5 to 2s plus 5 the whole divided by denominator squared which is s squared plus 5s plus 6 this is equal to 0. So now let us expand this let us multiply this so on multiplication we get this particular numerator as 2s cube plus 10s squared plus 12s minus 2s cube minus 5s squared plus 2s plus 5 divided by this particular term when we take it over here this particular term vanishes so this is equal to 0. So here what we observe is that this 2s cube and this 2s cube gets cancelled and upon simplifying this we would now get 5s squared plus 14s plus 5 is equal to 0. So here now upon taking basic 11 standard mathematics upon factorizing this we would get the value of s as s is equal to minus b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a which is equal to here b is 14 so we have minus 14 plus or minus root of 14 squared minus 4 into 5 into 5 which is 100 divided by 2 into a which is 10. So here upon simplifying this you would get two values of s which is s is equal to minus 0.42 and s is equal to minus 2.37. So here these are the breakaway points. So now let us plot these breakaway points onto this particular graph. So first one is minus 0.42. So minus 0.42 would be somewhere around here. And next we have minus 2.37 which is somewhere around here. So here these are the two breakaway points of the this particular root locus. So here what we observe is that the root locus in the case of a root locus k varies from 0 to infinite. So here the value of k varies from 0 to infinite. So the value of k is equal to 0 at the value of poles here k is equal to 0 and here k is equal to 0 and the value of k is infinite at the 0. So here k is equal to infinite and k is equal to infinite. So therefore here we have two breakaway points that is 0 0.42 and minus 2.37. So here what we observe is that the line from the first pole emerges over here and goes towards this particular breakaway point. And now the line from this particular pole P2 emerges from here and reaches this particular breakaway point. And it breaks away like this. At this particular point it breaks away. And once it breaks away like this, it will now move towards the next breakaway point over here which acts as a break in point like this. So therefore it will go like this, like this, like this, like this and it would move towards a break in point which is at 2.37 and now then it would move towards the zeros like this. So therefore this line emerges from the poles over here like this and breaks away and now it reaches into the break in point over here and moves towards the zeros. So thus this thus is the required root locus of a particular control system given by the open loop transfer function g of s into h of s is equal to k into s plus 2 into s plus 3 divided by s plus 1 into s minus 1 when the value of k varies from 0 to infinite. So I hope you guys understood that problem. Stay tuned guys, in the upcoming videos we'll be discussing much much more deeper problems as in how to plot the root locus of a particular control system. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you can plot the root locus of a particular control system. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.